Yeah. So finish the sentence off for me. Killing a baby in the womb is okay when? Ah, uh, there we go. Never. <laughs> Brittany, I noticed you called it a child. So finish the sentence for me. It's okay to kill a child in the womb when? Well, maybe it's just okay if you adopt it out and just not keep it because if somebody is not ready for it. So you're saying that you're changing your mind about yeah. abortion right now? Yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds bad when you put it in that kind of words. Would you have a vote for someone who was for the killing of children in the womb? No. Well, that's great. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yeah. It's not something I've thought about much, but I figured if I was ever in a situation like that, I'd just give it up for adoption if I couldn't take care of it myself. So, But I've never really thought of it like that, I guess. Isn't that great to give it up for adoption instead of killing it? Yeah. It's a wonderful option, mm -hmm. adoption. And just as you felt strongly about the life of Jews and we need to rise up as one person to speak against it, don't you think we need to do that when it comes to the issue of abortion? I think you have a valid point there. So I think never paralleled those two. Um, the Holocaust and yeah, abortion. Yeah. I feel like it should be allowed because it is a choice, but I feel like it... I personally will not do it. It's just... I I'm making you... So you, could, you wouldn't kill Jews, but it's okay for someone else to kill them? Yes. So what would you say to, to someone like you in Germany that says, well, it's you should never kill Jews, but I think people should have the right to do it? I don't think... Oh. Because that's what yeah, you're saying. That, that is that. what I said, huh? Okay. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, that's I've just changed my mind about abortion. So you're going to vote differently in future? Well, when you do vote? The shiz. Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. So you changing your mind about abortion? Yeah. When you put it that way, yeah, it does change your mind. It's never okay to kill a baby in the womb. Okay, so you're going to change your mind about abortion? Yes, I am. Are you going to vote differently in future? Yes, vote against abortion. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? In my heart, I would say never. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, I have. <laughs> you think it's a baby in the womb? Yes. So... What justification is there for killing a baby in the womb? Can you think of one? Um, <laughs> for killing a baby in the womb. Um, well, I think everyone's situation is... It, well, give me a situation where you could say, yep, yeah, that's justifiable. You can kill that baby because of... Um, you know what? I can't think of one. Adolf Hitler hated the Ten Commandments and wanted to free people from them. He called the commandments the curse of Mount Sinai and said that the God of the Bible was a tyrant who tells us to do the things we don't want to do. Clearly Hitler didn't like the thought of you shall not kill because it didn't fit into his hate-filled worldview. Although he's an extreme example, it's common practice to have a low moral standard when we free ourselves from the Ten Commandments or when we're unaware of their true meaning. It's encouraging to realize that people are willing to change their minds about abortion. When people see things from a different perspective, they're able to think clearly and often make honest, intelligent choices. As I spoke with people about abortion, a conversation often led to the issue of morals, where morals came from, and ultimately, the issue of the afterlife. Hey, what happens after someone dies? Do you think there's a heaven? Sure, we're going to go to heaven. Yes, sir. No. I think that that was something, like heaven and hell was kind of made up. Are you afraid of dying? No, I'm not afraid of death. Where are you going when you die? At the moment, hell. Stephen, what do you think happens when someone dies? Do you think there's an afterlife? Uh, I don't know, probably not. Probably not? So this is all there is? Uh, I think so, yeah. Do you believe God exists? I don't think so, no. If there is a heaven, do you think you get there? Are you a good person? Oh, yeah, for sure. God wouldn't be mad at me. I'm a good person morally. Yeah, I'm a good person. I'd hope so. Yes, sir. I believe in God. I believe in good. I don't do nobody no harm. If there's a heaven, do you think you're good enough to go there? Are you a good person? Uh, yeah, I think I'm a good person. Why would you go to hell? Because of my lifestyle I'm living. There is no hell. I don't believe that there is a judgment. You don't? No, I don't believe that. But what's going to happen to Hitler on Judgment Day? He's, he's in hell. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, I don't know. Thousands, I guess. 
Lies? Lies? Too many to count. Oh, countless. What do you call somebody who tells countless lies? A liar? You ever stolen something? In my lifetime? Mm-hmm. Sure, of course, yeah. Uh, yes. Sure. What do you call somebody who steals things? A thief. So what are you? A liar and a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Absolutely. Sure have. Absolutely. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. I heard you use his name just before, probably about 30 seconds ago, when you talked about lying. Do you realize that's called blasphemy? When you use God's name as a cuss word, it's very serious? Sure. I guess it is, yeah. Now, Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever done that? Looked at a woman with lust? Shoot me now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I like fornicating. It's fun. No, well, you can like raping and bank robbery. It can be fun, but it's not right. Have you ever looked at a guy with lust? No, I'm gay. I commit adultery about every two minutes, maybe. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Yes. So, Alicia, by your own admission, you're a lying, blasphemous adulterer at heart. And you've got to face God on Judgment Day. And we've looked at four of the Ten Commandments. Oh, my goodness. You had sex out of marriage. Yep. So listen to this, listen to this David. This is why you don't want to believe in God. You're a self-admitted, lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer, fornicator. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. And the thought of being morally responsible to him is abhorrent to you, so you deny his existence. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Makes total sense. So, John, you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. By your own admission, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a daughter at heart, a fornicator. Wow. So, will you go to heaven or hell? From the way it sounds, hell. Does that concern you? Absolutely. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Uh, guilty. Would you go to heaven or hell? Hell. Does that concern you? Yeah. So, does it concern you that if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? Not really, no. Well, don't try to change me around. I'm the way I am, and I don't give it. You'll be guilty of breaking the commandments. So does it concern you that today, if you die today, you'd end up in hell? Yes. So you're starting to think about your life and how valuable it is? Yes. Does it concern you that if you die today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? I think God's a loving God, and, and I think he would, uh, he would see my heart. You know, he does, and he sees a liar and a blasphemer and an adulterer at heart. But if you're, if you're repentant, there's something you can actually do because of God's kindness to have all your sins forgiven. Do you know what God did for sinners? Any idea? He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the earth to, um, to die on the cross for the sinners. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on the Day of Judgment, do you think you'll be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Uh, hell. Does that concern you? Uh, yes, that's somewhat. You know, God gave you a conscience so you know right from wrong. You know it's wrong to lie and steal and fornicate and blaspheme. It's written on your heart. Do you understand the legal implications of what he did? God's a judge. In his eyes, you're guilty because you violated his law, the Ten Commandments. You're heading for a place called hell, God's prison, without parole, but Jesus stepped in and paid your fine on that cross. That means God can legally dismiss your case because your fine was paid for by another. I don't know. Don't you think it's funny, though, that God will put a nice guy like me to, in hell? But a criminal might say that to a judge, but the judge will do that which is right, even if it's a nice guy. If he's raped and murdered, he's going to get the books thrown at him. And you've violated God's law, even though you might be a nice guy. You're a self-admitted lying thief, blasphemer, a daughter at heart. God will give you justice, but he's not willing that any perish. He's given you something that says, I don't want to die. Listen to it, man. You've got a cross in the middle of your eyes. Think about what Jesus did on that cross. Think about how much God cares about sinners, that he'd do that. And in the Bible verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he rose from the dead, and what you've got to do is repent, turn from your sins, trust in Jesus, God will give you everlasting life, he'll forgive your sins. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And the thing that will save you is God's goodness, the Savior, Jesus. He's like a parachute. Turning to a parachute won't save you, but putting it on will. And the moment you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the minute you put your trust in Him, Alicia, God will forgive your sins, dismiss your case, and grant you the gift of everlasting life. God will forgive our sins, including abortion, and grant us the gift of everlasting life. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes. You're going to think about this? Yes. So if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you have to do to be saved. You've got to repent 
not just confess your sins, but turn from them.